Right now, the third interstellar visitor ever detected, 3i Atlas, is careening straight through the inner solar system, racing inside Mars's orbit on a rare retrograde path. Within weeks, it will reach perihelion on October 29, 2025, accelerating to a staggering 68 kilometers per second, only to slip behind the sun where every telescope on Earth and in space goes blind. But as the world loses sight, this object's true scale and alien chemistry raise unsettling questions. What happens when a 50-kilometer-wide body from deep space slices head-on through the sun's electric field, unseen and unmeasured? The clock is ticking, the risks are mounting, and the biggest mysteries start the moment Atlas vanishes from view. Imagine tracing the path of a cosmic interloper that refuses to play by the rules of our solar system. 3i Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar object, doesn't just wander in from the void, it slices almost directly through the planetary plane, entering the inner system at an angle so steep it borders on defiance. The orbital inclination stands at 175 degrees, a near-perfect retrograde, meaning it moves in the exact opposite direction of the planets, against the grain of billions of years of solar system order. Most comets and asteroids share a broad counterclockwise circuit around the Sun, tracing the familiar path of the ecliptic. Atlas, by contrast, approaches nearly head-on, its orbit tilted just five degrees off the solar system's main plane. That's the difference between merging smoothly onto a highway and barreling in from the other side of the median, weaving through oncoming traffic. This geometry is more than a curiosity. It's a navigational nightmare for those tracking its progress. As Atlas dives inside the orbit of Mars, it carves through the heart of the inner solar system, crossing the planetary highway at a sharp, almost perpendicular angle. The numbers alone tell a story of rarity. Among tens of thousands of cataloged comets and asteroids, only a handful ever display such extreme retrograde motion. Retrograde objects are outliers, ones that also slice so close to the ecliptic inside Mars's orbit are rarer still. Atlas is the first interstellar body observed with this combination of steep tilt and low offset, creating a trajectory that is both visually dramatic and scientifically challenging. For orbital dynamicists, plotting this path means abandoning the usual assumptions. The standard models that predict comet positions break down when faced with a visitor that neither follows the ecliptic nor obeys the sun's gravitational leash. The hyperbolic arc of Atlas's journey, with an eccentricity far greater than one, guarantees that it is not bound to the sun. There will be no second pass, no slow looping return. This is a single, high-speed incursion, one that will never repeat. Such a geometry doesn't just make for impressive numbers on a chart. It sets up a series of observational hurdles that will soon become insurmountable. As Atlas approaches the Sun almost head-on, the angle between its path and our vantage point on Earth shrinks to a razor's edge. Soon, the Sun itself will act as a blinding curtain, hiding the interstellar visitor from every telescope pointed its way. But before that blackout arrives, the world's astronomers are racing to capture every possible detail of this rare and unpredictable trajectory, a cosmic crossing that will never be seen again. October 29th, 2025, at exactly 11.55 UTC. This is the moment mission planners have circled in red, the instant when 3 di atlas brushes closest to the sun. Every calculation, every urgent message between observatories converges on this timestamp. The countdown is not just about proximity, it's a race against physics itself. In July 2025, when Atlas was first clocked inside Mars's orbit, its speed already stood at a staggering 58 kilometers per second. That's nearly 130,000 miles per hour, fast enough to cross from New York to Tokyo in less than a minute. But the numbers don't stay put. As the comet falls toward the sun's gravity well, it accelerates relentlessly, gaining 10 more kilometers per second by perihelion. By late October, the velocity peaks at 68 kilometers per second, no human spacecraft has ever come close to matching that pace. This is the vis-viva law in action, 
the ancient formula that ties an object's speed to its distance from the sun. The closer Atlas plunges, the more energy it sheds as heat and light, the faster it moves. But there's a twist. Unlike the familiar comets that loop around the sun, Atlas is riding a hyperbolic trajectory. Its eccentricity is greater than one, a mathematical fingerprint that means it will never return. The sun's grip is not enough to hold it. After this single, furious pass, it will slingshot back into the interstellar dark, carrying any secrets it doesn't leave behind. For astronomers, this creates a window that is both thrilling and punishingly brief. The clock ticks down not just to perihelion, but to the moment when Atlas vanishes behind the sun, lost in the glare. Every hour brings the visitor closer to a patch of sky where observation becomes impossible. Instruments are calibrated, exposure times shaved to the limit, all in a final push to capture spectra, light curves, and images before the blackout curtain drops. There's no margin for error. The geometry is unforgiving. Once Atlas crosses that invisible boundary, data collection halts for weeks. Any missed measurement, any failed exposure, is a lost opportunity that will not repeat. The urgency is palpable. This is the last best chance to watch a piece of another star system skim our sun and escape forever. The moment passes quickly, and after that, only silence remains. October 21st, 2025, arrives with the precision of a deadline no one can negotiate. At that moment, 3E slash Atlas slips behind the sun, as seen from Earth, entering superior conjunction. Solar elongation shrinks to nearly zero. There's no safe angle left. The world's most advanced observatories, from SOHO and STEREO to the Parker Solar Probe and Solar Orbiter, face the same hard limit. Each instrument, no matter how sophisticated, is forced into retreat. The reason is simple and absolute. Solar glare. Even a magnitude 12 object, faint by astronomical standards, stands no chance against the sun's overwhelming brightness. For ground-based telescopes, the risk isn't just wasted time. It's the real possibility of blinding sensitive detectors, burning out irreplaceable hardware. Operations teams move quickly issuing safe mode commands and ramping down exposures. In control rooms from Maryland to Madrid, engineers monitor software that automatically shutters cameras and disables tracking routines as Atlas drifts too close to the solar disk. The same story plays out for space-based platforms. SOHO's LASCO coronagraph, designed to block the sun's light and reveal faint objects nearby simply cannot reach deep enough. At magnitude 12, Atlas is lost in the noise, invisible even to instruments built for solar proximity. STEREOs, heliospheric imagers, Parker's wide field cameras, and solar orbiters suite of detectors all hit their safety thresholds. Data streams go quiet. There's a sense of collective frustration among the observing teams. Months of coordination and emergency override protocols, all halted by a geometry that can't be changed. The blackout window is not just a figure of speech. It's a hard stop, a period when no photons from Atlas reach any telescope on or near Earth. Shift and stack techniques, which have rescued faint objects before, are rendered useless by the combination of solar background and the comet's low brightness. The numbers tell the story. With a separation of less than eight degrees from the sun and a magnitude nearly 10 times fainter than what coronagraphs can reliably detect, Atlas drops off the map entirely. What remains is a clock, ticking down the days of enforced silence. Every scientist knows the exact length of the gap counting the hours until observations might resume in late November. In the meantime, the most extraordinary phase of Atlas's solar encounter unfolds unobserved, shielded by the very star whose gravity drew it in. The data gap is absolute. For now, the universe keeps its secrets, and the world's telescopes wait in the dark. Every team with a telescope and a deadline tried to outsmart the blackout. Some reached for digital tricks, shift and stack, 
the technique that's rescued dim objects from the glare of city lights and the static of deep space. This time, the math came up empty. The background noise from the sun drowned out every possible frame. Even after stacking hundreds of exposures, no trace of Atlas surfaced above the digital static. The comet was simply too faint. The solar glare too overwhelming. No amount of clever processing could conjure a signal where none survived. Attention turned to the only vantage point left, Mars. Orbiters like Mars Express and ExoMars, circling the red planet on the far side of the Sun from Earth, aimed their cameras and spectrometers toward the coordinates where Atlas should have been. The geometry was promising. Mars stood well away from the Sun's blinding disk, offering a narrow window to catch the interstellar visitor as it slipped past. But the reality of Martian hardware set limits. The images came back blurred, the spectra faint and unresolved. No sharp outline of the nucleus, just a smudge of greenish coma against the cosmic background. The data hinted at activity, but nothing more. The core mysteries, composition, fragmentation, outgassing, remained sealed in solar silence. For weeks, the blackout held. No new detections, no last minute breakthroughs. The world's best instruments, from Hawaii to Chile to the Martian sky, all reported the same result, absence. The gap stretched on, a silent interval in the record of an object that might never return. Astronomers recalibrated their hopes, marking calendars for mid to late November when Atlas would finally reappear in the dawn sky. That window, brief and precious, would offer the first chance to test whether the comet survived its solar encounter intact, and whether its chemistry had shifted in the crucible of perihelion. The timeline now runs forward. By December 19th, Atlas will make its closest approach to Earth, passing at 1.80 astronomical units, a safe but tantalizing distance. Each day the blackout continues, the stakes grow clearer. Every missed observation is a lost chapter in the story of an interstellar traveler. For now, the scientific world waits, recalibrates, and prepares for the moment when the silence breaks and the data begins to flow again. Before the blackout descended, every available spectrograph was pointed at the dense, enigmatic coma of 3I slash Atlas. Initial estimates placed the nucleus somewhere between 5 and 50 kilometers across, a range that, even at the low end, would make it the largest interstellar object ever observed. Yet the core itself remained hidden, smothered by a coma so thick that even the sharpest instruments could not resolve its edges. Early in the approach, the coma radiated a deep rusty red, an unusual hue for a comet this close to the sun. By August, that palette shifted dramatically. The coma flared bright green, a transformation tracked in real time by teams at Mauna Kea and La Silla. The culprit, carbon-based molecules, especially C2 and C, N, set free as carbon dioxide, not water, vaporized from the surface. In most solar system comets, water drives the show. Here, it's carbon dioxide that dominates, hinting at a formation far from any familiar planetary nursery. Spectra told a stranger story still. The nickel to iron ratio in the coma's emission lines was off the charts. Nickel features outshining iron by margins not seen in local comets. Some models point to a birthplace in the aftermath of a supernova, or perhaps the core of a planet that broke apart long ago. Dust samples, analyzed through polarimetry, revealed grains that are fine, glassy, and metallic, not silicate rich. The light scattering off this dust showed strong negative polarization, a behavior more akin to the distant Kuiper belt than anything in the inner solar system. Each new measurement added weight to the sense of otherness. Before solar glare stole the view, the chemical fingerprint of Atlas was already rewriting expectations for what interstellar debris might look like. In the final weeks before conjunction, Atlas's coma defied every familiar pattern. Instead of trailing a classic tail away from the sun, the brightest region clung stubbornly to the sunward side, as if the solar wind itself couldn't sweep the dust away. High-resolution images revealed no sharp anti-solar tail, only a diffuse forward-scattering envelope. 
possibly a sheath of metallic grains or glassy fragments reflecting sunlight straight back toward Earth. The standard playbook for cometary behavior offered no easy explanation. Some teams speculated that the coma's unusual brightness profile might be driven by jets of carbon dioxide erupting from beneath the crust, while others pointed to the fine, metal-rich dust as the culprit, scattering light in ways never modeled for local comets. Then came the light curve anomaly. Just days before Atlas vanished behind the sun, photometric data showed an abrupt surge in brightness, far sharper than any slow, thermal-driven outgassing could explain. Theories multiplied. Had a chunk of the nucleus broken free, exposing fresh ice and volatile compounds? Was this a sign of fragmentation or a burst of activity triggered by electromagnetic forces as the object plunged into the sun's electric field? The debate split along familiar lines, thermal physics versus advocates of the electric universe, who argued for plasma-induced outbursts and charged dust interactions. With the blackout in effect, anticipation builds for the next window of observation. Teams stand ready to measure polarization shifts, track any deviation in the hyperbolic path, and listen for radio signals from charged particles. New protocols for faint object tracking near the sun are already in draft, fueled by the lessons of this encounter. Meanwhile, astrologers find meaning in Atlas's passage through Virgo, aligned in a grand cross, a celestial metaphor for transformation at the edge of winter. For now, every unanswered question waits on the far side of the sun as the world prepares for the data to return. On October 29, 2025, 3 and I Atlas will reach its closest point to the sun, moving at nearly 68 kilometers per second on a hyperbolic retrograde path, confirming its status as the third known interstellar object to enter our solar system. Its unique carbon dioxide-driven activity, high nickel-to-iron ratio, and dense metallic dust coma set it apart from any local comet studied to date. Despite efforts from ground-based and space telescopes, direct observations will be impossible during its superior conjunction, creating a data gap from late October to mid-November. To date, no mission has captured a resolved image of the nucleus, and the true cause of its sun-facing coma and pre-blackout brightening remains unproven. Future observations will test for electromagnetic effects and further chemical anomalies. The passage of 3i slash Atlas highlights both the limits of current technology and the value of rapid coordinated global response. For now, its mysteries remind us how much remains unknown about the materials and forces that cross the boundaries of our solar system.